Which one keeps work to do if I put it up there? Which one? This one. Uh, we might be able to get that up there. What? How long is it? Like, uh, I can lift it up on there. Yeah, I'll throw it on there. Hey folks, welcome back to the old Jarhead Sawdust Roadshow. I'm Eric, and if you're new to the channel, I hope to earn your subscription today. Now, <laughs> let's start off with this. Folks, not every job with a portable sawmill involves 21 foot, 36 inch ponderosa pines or big dug firs or majestic maples. It just isn't that way. Not every log is a gorgeous black walnut, although I do have a bunch of black walnut here to mill. But you know, not every job is, is those big crazy jobs that you may see a lot of on YouTube. No folks, guess what? Sometimes those logs could barely be called logs at all. And in this video, I'm gonna be milling up a bunch of little guys. Just three, four foot long logs that frankly can give you a lot of fits. The truth is the big logs, yeah, they can be a challenge too. But guess what? <laughs> These little ones can be just as challenging. In fact, the truth is I've often had more trouble with the little logs than the big ones. Sure, the big ones make the hydraulics groan and moan trying to lift them and turn them and they certainly look spectacular <laughs> when you're catching that shot from the opposite side and all you can see is my head sticking out above the log. I mean, those are pretty impressive. I get it, right? But these little logs, <laughs> they move around. They don't want to clamp. Sometimes you got to sacrifice something in order to get them milled down. And I guess you could ask yourself, is it even worth it? I mean, <laughs> you've got three or four foot chunk of wood here that barely counts as a log. Is it really worth having somebody like me come out and mill those up? Well, I think that's really a matter of, one, what you can afford, two, can you actually get this wood at a decent price wherever you are? Even let's say you could get black walnut at 10 bucks a board foot, maybe if you find it online. I have seen it there, though honestly, I haven't looked in a while, but it's certainly possible to get walnut and maple and all these great hardwoods for a decent price. So is it really worth having somebody come out and mill it for you? Well, I, I would argue that it actually can be. Okay, now let's get to it. We know it can be worth it. So let's get milling. Look at that little chunk of bark flying off there. You gotta watch those sometimes, especially on these little ones, they can stop the head. But you know, <laughs> one thing about these little short logs, the log turner just doesn't work the way you want it to. But watch this, folks. Oh, you see that? Didn't have the log clamp all the way in. I brought it up, but just not quite tight enough. And I'm often talking about the need to leave your side supports up. Guys will say, oh, you don't need to clamp or you don't need to leave your side supports up or whatever. Well, yeah, you do, and there's why. Luckily, my side supports were up and the clamp was pretty close. It wasn't tight, but it was pretty close. So I was able to stop things. Nothing super exciting happened. Bring out my felling wedges, jam them in there, pull the head back. You know what? Kind of reposition things a little bit. Make sure that it's solid. Now. The bunks are only 27 inches apart right there. So you've really got to position these small guys just right. Now they mill fast, <laughs> you know, zip, 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 we'll get her done. But as you can see, it can be a little challenge, but here we've got some nice pieces of wood coming off. This is beautiful stuff. And, and I think that's what's really important. Yeah, this log's, you know, 36, 40 inches long. It's not very big. But I just looked on the big box store and it's running about 16 bucks a board foot there now. So that's better than the 24 I saw previously about five or six years ago. It's 16 bucks a board foot, folks. I checked a few other places. That's pretty common. So a one by six by two feet long is running about $16 a board foot, folks. <laughs> 
It takes me a lot less time to mill one of these up than $16 a board foot, trust me on that. So here we go, next one, oh, you know, maybe 36, 38 inches, something like that. It's a little guy. These don't sit well, and you'll notice that my side supports, my manual side supports, they're up all the way, so I'm kind of trying to pull them down and try to position this right, and it's clear to me it's not gonna sit right, so here comes the sacrificial board. If you haven't seen me do this before, it's because, well, I haven't done a lot of really short stuff in my, my most more recent videos. I haven't done a lot of short stuff in the last year, so, you know, <laughs> you just haven't seen it. But this is what I call a sacrificial board. You take a board that you don't mind taking the top off of, and oh, look at that thing move. Wow, crazy, huh? But now, the thing you gotta remember, you gotta go all the way down to the end of that board if you cut into it. Now, at that point, I wasn't really all the way into it yet but we're going to get into it and and that's why i call this a sacrificial board it's just something to provide a clamping surface because this short log is just a little too small so you bring out something that you don't mind trimming down a little bit now that's some beautiful wood right there some black locust he's got sitting there and you know what that's okay because once we get this log squared up and i still need that board there i'm gonna flatten out one side it's just like edging flitches folks so using flitches, kind of handy in this particular case, and that's what I like to do. Take a decent thick, thick take a, a flitch of decent thickness, you know, inch and a half, two inches, something like that. Throw it up against the backstops. You'll notice all four of them are catching it now. Clamp that little log against it, and here you go. You see I'm, I'm actually into it about half an inch. I'm just putting a flat edge on the edge of that sacrificial board or that flitch, and that's perfect. We'll square up that side. He's got a usable square piece of wood. Now we get this little log squared up enough that we could remove the sacrificial board and, and clamp that log down on the small side supports or, or the log stops, if you will. Now you notice I left it up there. Ah, that's okay. It's a, it's a matter of choice. If you feel comfortable, I could have probably just dropped it off anyway. I decided to go ahead and leave it just to be on the safe side. You don't want that guy twisting on you. And they can, you saw it earlier. They can absolutely twist on you. So we went ahead, left it there, took some more off and he said, you know what, good to go. I'm gonna pull that out. I'll do that one on my own bandsaw and away we go. Let's get to the next one. These little guys, you know, they can always be a challenge. And uh, <laughs> it just, it is what it is. Sometimes you lift them, push them, whatever. And then when you go to load them up on the mill, you gotta have them on your forks as centered as possible. You want the forks to be grabbing them. Otherwise you're gonna be holding one into the other. And then as you can see, Patrick there just kind of rolled it up on the deck. That works too. And again, you know, it's just a matter of trying to get it positioned. I still had my sacrificial board there just to make sure that I could get the log loaded all the way without throwing it off the other side. As you saw there, when you start running your log clamp in to push the log up against the side supports, they tend to twist a little bit on you. So having that board there actually really kind of helps. It's just one of those things you do. Then you can remove it. And once you can make sure that your side supports are gonna keep that log from rolling off on your side of the mill, luckily it's small enough you can pick it back up and put it back on there if you had to. And away you go again. And, and this is kind of just the routine for these little guys, you know, you, you just make sure you get them positioned right and that you can clamp them down right and you just gotta be careful, take your time, work through them, pay attention to everything that's going on all the time and I guess that's one thing I could mention you know if you're new to running a sawmill and you're watching this video one of the things you've really got to do when you're running the mill is you're watching the sawdust coming off the band you're watching the band tension that's that gauge on the right right there you're watching your debarker you're keeping your eye out for the customer you're keeping your eye out for stuff dropping down into the track that can stop the mill you're just kind of doing all that paying attention to where your mill height is at what your simple set is set to, you know, you might be set it to one inch or an inch and an eighth or two inches. The simple set is just the computer that is on the mill that helps you adjust to the next milling height or the next size, right? So if I'm milling one buys or something like that, I can set the simple set. And of course, you're watching your bands. 
Now, speaking of vans, I want to tell you guys about a company that I think you really need to check out if you've got a sawmill. I've known about Joe Main over at ICT or Industrial Cutting Tools for a long time, but Joe's over on the East Coast. He's all the way over in Georgia, and folks, that's about 3,500 miles from me. And so I've known about him because I'm active in the sawmill world. I've been on forest reform since about 2009 or 10. And so, I, you know, I, when Joe started, which I think he started with the company about nine years ago, um, it wasn't long after that I probably started hearing his name on forest reform, but he was so far from me that I never really thought to call him. I bought all my bands from Wood Miser, and <laughs> you know what? You just think a guy out in Georgia, how's he gonna help me, right? Yeah, apparently he sells both wood miser but also bands made by industrial cutting tools. And I've heard that their welds are the absolutely best there is in the bandsaw world, but he's too far from me. And so I just never thought about getting bands from him. Well, guess what, folks? I get my bands from Joe now. He has free shipping to the 48 contiguous states. So <laughs> not only do they have free shipping, so you buy bands from Joe, it doesn't cost you to ship them. But after I talked to Joe and had him send me a box of seven degree, one and a half inch bands for my LT40, and by the way, if you haven't heard, I love inch and a half bands and I love seven degree profile. They're just the best in my opinion, at least with the 26 and a half horse motor. But you know, so I talked to Joe and I said, yeah, send me a box of seven degree bands. Let's try them out. I think it was two days, <laughs> two days, folks. Like, wow, bang at the door here you go that's fantastic fantastic service and i have to tell you guys that i know that mill millions of board feet of lumber on these mills buy their bands from joe main so i'm going to put the contact number for joe down below by the way it's 229-563-1172 it'll be in the description down below give joe a call tell him the old jarhead sent you Joe's going to take care of you. Trust me on that. Listen, folks, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I've earned your subscription. Hit that like button. Drop your comments down below. Share this video around. And y'all have a great day. The old jarhead out.